Marine veteran was killed on the outskirts of Bakhmut, Ukraine. 26-year-old Cooper Harris Andrews was likely killed by a mortar on April 19th while helping citizens ev evacuate the embattled city, according to his mother. She says his body still has not been recovered because of the fierce ongoing fighting there. CNN's Nick Payton Walsh reports for us now from southeastern Ukraine as the world awaits a major new phase in the war and in the battle in Bakhmut. It was hard to get much uglier, but each dawn, still the battle for Bakhmut grinds on. Ukraine Monday said it had pushed Russian forces back who had abandoned positions. Months of agonizing fighting for about a football field every day, say analysts. Leaving little standing. And Russian injured, the soldiers here said abandoned. There was a guy laying there in the reeds, he says, yelling, guys, come and help me for three days, only a hundred yards from the Russians. Also emerging too on this, the road of life, the last way in and out of the city, news of the death of Cooper Harris Andrews, aged 26, a former US Marine and firefighter from Cleveland, Ohio, who felt compelled to join Ukraine's fight. Cooper wanted to correct things. We had a lot of conversations about fashion. I used to say, Cooper, so that means you're just going over there to drive an ambulance. <laughs> No, you just don't believe in stuff. You like do something about it. Harris, let's make a picture for history. Here he is near the front line in January as part of the Foreign Legion. Described as ideological to the core and anti-authoritarian, his body has yet to be recovered from Bakhmut as the fighting is too intense. His mother recalled the last time they spoke. I asked Cooper, because I'm like Cooper's mom, like, is there anything I can try and get to you or send you? And Cooper said, yes. Can you send me hot sauce and chopsticks? <laughs> so I have like a thousand chopsticks in my house because I was trying to get chopsticks for everyone. I figured if Cooper was chopsticks. And I have all these little packets of um, hot sauce that I was going to send the Cooper. Over the past weeks, graphic battle footage has emerged, showing what it's like when Russians get into a Ukrainian trench network. Here, a soldier races into cover. But soon, a shell hits. They are all miraculously OK, but the attack has started. Watch, and you see a Russian approach and throw a grenade. He misses. And they go on to shoot down Russians advancing meters from them. Shells continue to land. The attack persists for over 10 minutes. But the brutal fight for Bakhmut goes on and on. So what is happening around Bakhmut? A matter of weeks ago, the Russians seemed to be signaling that they were in the ascendant, and then we had the Russian head of the Wagner mercenary group, Yevgeny Prigozhin, over the weekend suggest they're running out of artillery shells and might have to pull back, and now Ukraine says they're on the front foot and Russians are abandoning their positions. The city's becoming a kind of signalling game for both sides to project strength and then possibly drag each other's forces in. It is something of a sideshow despite the extraordinary loss of life. One indication from John Kirby, the National Security Council spokesperson, is they might, Russia, have lost 100,000 uh, troops since December, mostly fighting for Bakhmut. That's casualties, dead and wounded. The real eyes, though, right now on the larger counter-offensive, most likely not around Bakhmut, but in the south of Ukraine, Jake. All right, Nick Payton Walsh, uh, live for us in Zaporizhia, Ukraine. Thank you. Stay safe. Joining us now to take a, a step back uh, on the war in Ukraine, take a 30,000-foot uh, view, uh, The Atlantic magazine's editor-in-chief, Jeffrey Goldberg, he and staff writer Ann Applebaum wrote the June edition's cover story entitled The Case for the Total Liberation of Ukraine. And you can read that online uh, today. Jeffrey, thanks for being here. I appreciate it. You write that a victory for Ukraine can be easily... Defined, it would mean sovereignty, safety, justice, but, but getting there, not so easy 
uh, to define. You spoke with Zelensky mm -hmm. uh, at length twice. Um, where does his optimism uh, about a victory, about a path to this, this, this proposal, um, where does it come from? His optimism comes in part from the serial uh, underestimation of the entire world about Ukraine's capabilities. Sure. I, I mean, you know, you, we, we talk about Bakhmut, uh, Russia bogged down in this tiny town, relatively small town, uh, for months and months and, and months. Um, if you recall, think back 14, 15 months ago, we thought Ukraine was going to be wiped out, wiped off the map in a matter of days. Uh, and, you know, we were in Kyiv. Uh, I was in Kyiv last year. I was here there this year. Um, the change is remarkable, even though it's under periodic rocket attack. Uh, you know, there is no existential threat to most of the country anymore. And what, what I mean by all of that is that we have underestimated their resolve, their capabilities, um, their desire to win. Russia has no morale whatsoever. The Ukrainians are all morale. 